Now we're going to look at solving inequalities. So an inequality is a number sentence with a less than, a greater than, a less than or equal to, or a greater than or equal to as its verb instead of an equal sign. So equations have equal signs. Inequalities have a less than or a greater than. A graph of an inequality is a drawing that represents its solutions. We tend to graph inequalities because there's actually infinite solutions. When you solve an equation, you get one, maybe two answers, depending on the equation. But when you solve an inequality, there are infinite solutions. So if it's x is less than 6, there's infinite numbers that are less than 6. So we have a visual representation of that with a graph. The sentences x plus 4 less than 10 and x less than 6 are equivalent since they have the same solution set. And if you solve x plus 4 less than 10, you get x less than 6. And we're going to look at solving. The solution set, x such that x is greater than 2, is written using set builder notation. There's two different ways to um, write your final answer. We have what we call set builder notation. We also have interval notation that you'll look at when you move on to the next algebra course. So let's look at solving some of these or looking at some possible solutions. So here's of an inequality, we have x is less than or equal to negative 6. And we need to determine whether each number is a solution or is not. So just a yes or no. And all we're going to do is compare. So for um, a, is a less than or equal to negative 6? And the answer is no. 0 is actually greater than any negative number. Um, is negative 3 less than or equal to negative 6? Sometimes when you're dealing with negative numbers, it is difficult to visualize that. So if you think of a number line, and we're dealing with negative 6, so we'll have like 0 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here's negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, and so on. So negative 3, 1, 2, 3, would be right here. Well, the number on the right is always going to be larger. So negative 6 is smaller. So is negative 3 less than or equal to negative 6? That is also no. Is six, negative 6 less than or equal to negative 6? The answer to that is yes, because of the equal to part. If it just had the less than, then we would have said no. But it's less than or equal to, and negative 6 is definitely equal to itself. Is negative 9 less than or equal to negative 6? Well, 7, 8, negative 9 would be here. Negative 9 is on the left, so therefore it is less than. So this is a yes. And what about negative 5.4? Well, negative 5.4, here's negative 5. So negative 5.4 would be about right here. Is that, is negative 5.4? less than or equal to negative 6? That would be no, because negative 5.4 is on the right of negative 6. If it was on the left of negative 6, then we would have said yes. So now let's practice graphing these. So the first one, less than 2. So if we have a number that is less than 2, We can actually graph it two different ways, so depending on what algebra course you're in, you may be graphing it two different ways. One method is to use a circle, either an open circle or a closed circle. So if we want less than 2, here's 2 right here. If I want less than that, I would put an open circle and I would shade and draw an arrow to the left all of these answers on this side are solutions. And we fill in the arrow at the end to indicate that it keeps going and going in that direction. Another method for graphing that we use in upper algebra courses is instead of a circle, we would use an open parenthesis facing the direction we wanted to shade. And we would still shade and fill in So we would either have a 
parenthesis or an open circle. Just make sure that when you're completing your assignments that you pay attention to which method they're wanting you to use. So let's look at this next one. We have it greater than or equal to negative 2. So negative 2 is right here. Since we're equal to, if we're using the circle notation, we would draw a circle and we would fill it in. That indicates that it's also equal to. And this time we would shade to the right because we want greater than. And all of this would be included. If we're using the parenthesis or bracket notation, then to indicate that it's equal to, I would use a squared off bracket and shade to the right. So again, this is just another way of graphing, just depending on which course you're in. But both of those do mean the same thing. Now number nine looks a little strange, but we want everything that is between negative two and five. One, two, three, four, and here's five. So it has to be less than five. So open circle on five has to be greater than or equal to negative 2, so that one gets filled in and shaded in between. If you're using the other notation, we would have used a squared off bracket, and we would have done an open parenthesis and shaded in between. And we have one more, numbers between negative 4 and 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, so there's negative 4, and we want less than 0, so that would be an open circle. We want greater than negative 4, that would be an open circle, and shaded in between. Or we would have open parentheses and shaded in between. So graphing is just a visual representation of all the solutions. Now let's look at actually solving some of these. So we solve inequalities the same way we solve um, regular equations. So all of the addition principle, multiplication principle, simplifying, all of that's still going to be the same. So let's look at 14. I have variables on both sides. Um, with inequalities, you really do want your variable on the left. It's going to be easier for you to work through. So I would do a minus 3x both sides. and that's going to give me negative 1x plus 7 is less than or equal to 2 and now I'll subtract 7 from both sides and that's going to give me negative 1x less than or equal to negative 5 and the last step would be to divide by negative 1. Now here's the only little trick you have to remember with inequalities is if you multiply or divide by a negative, your sign actually reverses. Negative 5 over negative 1 would be a positive 5. So x is greater than or equal to 5. So you solve them the same way we do equations, but just in that last step, if you happen to be dividing by a negative or multiplying by a negative, then you would have to reverse your sign. And it's what you're dividing by or multiplying by. It's not the original number. So the reason why we switch it is because of the division of negative 1. It has nothing to do with the negative on the 5. Okay, let's look at... Let's look at one that has the distributive property. So on 29, we have 4 times the quantity 3y minus 5. So again, I would solve it just like I would equation. 4 it gets distributed, so I end up with 12y minus 20 less than or equal to 4. Now that I've simplified, I can solve. So I need to isolate my variable term. So that's why I'm moving the 20. That leaves me 12y less than or equal to 24 divide by 12 divide by 12 
y is less than or equal to 2. And that would be my final answer. Let's go ahead and solve 30 as well. It looks a little bit more challenging. So it looks like we have some distributive to do first. So I'm going to have 2r minus 8 plus 5 is less than or equal to 7r plus 56 minus 16. Now I can combine some like terms. So my minus 8 plus 5, I can actually combine that. So I have 2r minus 3 is greater than or equal to 7r. And then I can combine the 56 minus 16. That's going to be 40. Now that I've simplified everything, I can start moving things around. So I'm going to get all of my r terms to the left side. That's going to leave me negative 5r minus 3 greater than or equal to 40. Now I'm going to move the 3. That's going to leave me negative 5r greater than or equal to 43. And now one final step. I'm going to have to divide both sides by negative 5. And that's going to give me r. And since I have to divide by a negative, I have reversed my symbol. And I'm going to have negative 43 fifths.